I got a set of torsion bars sandblasted and painted yesterday. They sure look pretty. I know it's kind of weird on this plaid sheet I've got it laying on, but it's there. Look nice and beautiful black. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk about putting these things in. I'm actually going to do it later because the car's in the shop. Anyway, uh, far as the twist on these things, I've never thought super much about it because whenever I've replaced them, I've always marked front and back and I put them right back in exactly the way they were. Well, I don't know how these came out anymore. And there isn't like a front or back mark. So you can kind of see that'll show up. There we go. Uh, this one says left. And the other side, other end has got the same, same marking on it pretty much too. But when I take these out, the old ones out, I will look at that to see if there's any distinctive marks um, on them. But anyway, so I started thinking about it. What is, you know, front and rear. So I laid this out. And which direction does, when it's in there and all the tension's on it, when the suspension's acting, what direction is it actually twisting? Well, looking at it from the front, on the driver's side anyway, it's twisting counterclockwise. So it's twisting like in the direction of this arrow. I drew, I drew an arrow on here. That's the direction it's twisting. So then the opposite is true of this end. If the suspension end was stationary twisting and the car was moving, it would be twisting essentially the opposite direction. You can't have both ends twisting the same way because then it, there's no tension there. There's no, there's no lift, there's no strength. So I thought, okay, now I've got an arrow on each end. What happens if I put it in the exact opposite, you know, end to end opposite? Oh, look the arrows are still in the right direction. So honestly, I don't think there's a front and rear. There is a left and right to these. I've never done it myself, but I've heard people who have accidentally put left and right in backwards, like left on right, right on left, and they don't make it very far before they break because they're designed to twist. All their torsional strength is one direction. And then you twist it backwards and eventually they snap. They snap like a twig, apparently. Kind of like, well, whatever these did down there. So, anyway, I just figured I'd start the video with that. That, as far as the way I do the math, there is no front and rear. There obviously is left and right. And the other one, you know, this one's got the L stamped into it. 661L. Uh, the other one has got, like, 660R. So, that 660661 must be part of the part number. Anyway... That's how we're going to start. I will get this thing up in the air, start taking stuff apart, and then show you the process to take these things out and put them back in. So there. It's not very difficult. It's just time-consuming, and you really don't even need any special tools. I know there's allegedly a special tool for these, you know, some clamp thing to hold on to them, you know, from the from a, like a dealership kind of thing. I don't have that. I'm not going to spend a couple hundred dollars on one. Um, I know you're not. You shouldn't be grabbing them with a vice grip to uh, push them out because that lateral scratch in there, since it's a a uh, crystalline structure, the way it, way it is set up, that can easily um, grow bigger. You know, grow way bigger. Kind of like glass. You put a scratch in a glass, a small crack, a small scratch, and it can grow really big. That's just the way it is. So. Uh obviously you can see i've got this side tore apart um so sometimes you can get the lower control arm past the dust shield sometimes you can't this is a, a vehicle where you just can't so you got to take all that stuff off otherwise i'd save 20 minutes aside probably total the other thing you have to do the shock is still is unbolted but it's just kind of hanging in there right now uh take the sway bar loose because this lower control arm has to move it has to be able to swing down farther than what the, if the whole thing is assembled will allow it to go. And I don't know if they specifically designed it that way so that it couldn't accidentally fall out. Um, but because there is, some, once this is all bolted together, even all the way down, there's tension on that torsion bar, even with the tension bolt completely loose. So let me crawl under here and show you that. Um, Okay, so here's the tension bolt. Since the ride height on this was already kind of set, I'm marking this 
you know, I'd always mark it longitudinally so I know I have my reference. I'm not like guessing where I had it marked. Um, and then count the number of turns it takes to unscrew this. This was pretty close to maxed out. So these torsion bars may have been already a little bit weak. That seems a long ways in there. Most of them I've set aren't quite that deep into the hole, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna count them coming out. So that way, I, and that's what I'm gonna put them back in at. And then we're gonna set it down, we're gonna bounce it a little bit and see once what it looks like. I will uh, refer to the factory service manual on setting the right ride height or I'll just set it so it looks good, make sure both sides are the same and uh, go from there. But the next thing to do, obviously since this, this one is broke, I should just be able to do it. That was loud. Ah. That came out pretty easy, actually. Well, I mean, because there's the other end is broke off. And I will show you the far end here in a little bit once I uh, move some tools out of the way so I can slide underneath there. So there, well, let me move this. There is the rear anchor point. There is a little clip like this. Back up a little bit so you can see it. There we go. This goes in there. I don't know if you can see. There's a groove in there where that thing fits. I've actually got the torsion bar pulled ahead a little way so you can kind of see it. It's, oops, it's, yeah, you know what? Can't see for shit on the camera. But anyway, that's what it is. And you just kind of push the torsion bar out. Granted, this is a very short piece of it. Putting the new one in is simple as pushing it through. The only problem is if I can show it. I know this is not exactly the best camera angle, but there's a rubber boot there that that first nut has got to get pushed through. That sometimes is a challenge. I'm going to grease up that boot a little bit, so hopefully it'll slide through there a little easier than kind of put it all back. So all back together again. In the process of putting it back together, I remembered what a, one of the things I forgot to do. There is this nut right here, and that's the um, lower control arm pivot and bushing you know that's all that that assembly need to loosen that thing up a couple turns so the lower control arm swings freely so you can swing it down far enough to get the uh, torsion bar to line up in there correctly I was having a heck of a time I couldn't get it to line up couldn't get it to line up and then all of a sudden I remember oh yeah that's why so but so the driver's side is done completely obviously other than the wheel I got to put on but passenger side should go a lot faster because one I know how to do everything now without having to re-remember things and all my tools are sitting there ready to go all right so doing a little autopsy here this was the driver's side you can see a pretty nice clean fresh brake the passenger side oops that's that's still a little warm yet um, this thing fought, holy cow, that thing did not want to come out. I think what happened, it was just tweaked in there just a little bit into the hole. And, and of course, you couldn't grab onto anything to wiggle it. So I had the port of power and the torch finally to get that thing out. Warm it up a little bit, pushing on it with all four plus tons before it finally decided to move. But anyway, so let's see. It's kind of hard to tell on this one. A little easier here. Let's see if I can get it in the light better. There we go. You can see there's a fairly clean looking snap. And then over here, it's all rusty. And a little wet right now. It got rained on outside. So more than half of that, I'm going to say, was broke and already rotting, rusting away. I don't know for how long. I don't know if that was, was it like that for six months, six years, 26 years? I have no idea. So it wasn't just the weight of the snow the weight of the snow was the final straw and i'm sure once one broke then there goes the other one i mean shortly thereafter like maybe milliseconds after um but yeah you can really see see some of the rot not the rot i guess the rust in there but still you know what what does it take to break one of those you know from weight or from going over speed bumps or what and of course in the other like I said the other question is how long was it bad before it finally gave up completely and I guess as sucky as this is it's a whole lot better to have it happen over winter where it's just sitting there out there in storage essentially 
versus you know going down the highway at 80 miles an hour and have that thing snap that's uh that would be a eye-opening experience and probably a you know your bowels might open up too in a situation like that but anyway so <clears throat> the uh the other side the passenger side was i think fought the whole way but it's out i can see the damage you kind of see the rust on it and stuff so all right i still have no idea how to prevent that from happening i don't know if there is a way to prevent it from happening so there now it's back to the land of the living i did some adjustment I, both sides are the same our ride height is the same anyway now that i get it outside it's maybe sitting a little low i might give them a little crank right away i don't know but the plan is to put a couple hundred miles on it before i go do a wheel alignment to it because it needs it it's close to what it was but those torsion bars haven't had any tension on them for years now so they need to kind of relearn where they're supposed to be so to finalize this video here um i'm happy with the ride height i had to do several adjustments so after i put it in i kind of set it probably a little bit higher than what it was before i took it literally a mile a half mile out and a half mile back and the thing dropped an inch and a half cranked her back up again uh drove into town and back so about 30 miles or so and it lost another inch plus so i tightened her back up i went into town again another 30 miles and it hasn't dropped it i mean it maybe like dropped like a quarter inch so i think it's settled to where it's gonna be so i just have to go get a wheel alignment done to it it drives straight steering wheel is straight doesn't pull or anything like that but i know it's it needs to be checked just because i don't want to burn up good tires and one other thing i should mention you know i talked about i said you know you had to take everything off you know, take that whole um knuckle assembly off so you can swing the lower control arm all the way down so you can get at stuff i started thinking about that you might not have to if you can get that pivot loose enough to swing it down but i've never been able to do that on on a driving vehicle like this when i've when i've messed with them i've always had to take it out apart so i can get it down far enough and get the tension off the torsion bar itself most of most of my experience has been taking a car apart because i'm doing a restoration on it that kind of thing or parts and then putting it together you know piece by piece by piece so everything's apart anyway so i guess maybe it's possible i think it's just easier it helps get things out of the way also so you're not fighting a bunch of other stuff you know um so that's kind of a maybe next time i have to do it i'll try that was weird the guy just drove through the stop sign with the door open bizarre anyway um so maybe whatever dude uh, so maybe next time if i have to do something like this i'll try that you know try not taking it all apart but be prepared to it anyway so anyway there it is the snow was the essentially the the uh final straw for that torsion bar that was already broke how that happens you know or how that happened in this case anybody's guess i've had this car for a long time i haven't been ditch hopping it or anything like that so i don't know who knows when that happened